Passive radiators are all the rage right now, but there is a lot of confusion on how to actually implement a passive radiator in a design. Today, I wanna to help you try to navigate through that with some simple tips and tricks to show you how to pick out the right passive radiator for your project and then how to tune that so that it sounds good in the end. So let's get started. Now, if you're not familiar with the passive radiator, it looks just like another subwoofer in your system or another woofer. It's not, it's actually not a driver at all. It has the motor structure cut off and this acts like a port so you can get a more efficient low end, assuming you can implement that correctly. So let's go ahead and head over to Parts Express. I'll go ahead and throw an affiliate link down there. So if you find this video useful, please go ahead and use that. It does help out the channel. And I'll even throw a coupon code down there for you as well. Now, if we head over to Parts Express, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a subwoofer. Now, a lot of people will pick out a subwoofer like this one. This is a 12 inch subwoofer by Dayton Audio. And they'll look at this and they'll say, okay, I need two 12 inch passive radiators because there's this myth out there that says you need two passive radiators of the exact same size in order to supplement one subwoofer or one driver. And that's just not true. What you're actually looking for is double the volume displacement. Now, thankfully, Parts Express gives us all the details that we need in the specifications so that we can figure out what the volume displacement is. Now, if we go ahead and scroll down to the specifications, we're gonna see that it has the steel small parameters. Now we're gonna check out these steel small parameters because there's two of them that we really need to pay attention to. One is the SD and the other is the X max. Now you do have to be careful because these are typically going to be different measurements. Like for an example, this SD is in centimeters squared and our X max is in millimeters. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of conversion. Thankfully with metric, it's a little bit easier, but let's go ahead and go to our calculator. We wanna multiply these numbers together. That's going to give us our volume displacement. So in this particular case, we take 506.7 and we're gonna multiply that by 1.43 because we're just changing, converting the millimeters of 14.3 to centimeters. And we have a total of 724. That's the volume that we need displaced. Now for the passive radiator typically to work well, we're gonna want twice that. So we're gonna multiply that by two and we're looking for a passive radiator that has a volume displacement of 1449 or bigger. Interestingly enough, Parts Express does sell a passive radiator for this particular driver. So if we take a look at um, their passive radiators, we're going to see that they have the RSS 315 PR. Now this passive radiator, if we click on the specifications, we're gonna see that this has a X max of 26 millimeters and the same surface area of the cone. Let's go ahead and do our calculations. We'll take 506.7 and we'll multiply that by 2.6 and we get uh, 1317 for the volume displacement. Now, if we take a look at that, that is just a little bit smaller than our 1449, which is what we were looking for. But in this case, it's so close, I think we should throw it in WinISD and take a look to see how close it really is and if we need a second passive radiator or if we should look for a different passive radiator. So let's go ahead and open up WinISD and we'll bring in that driver, which I already have saved. If you don't know how to do this, just I have a tutorial that shows you how to uh, implement these drivers into the program so that way you can easily test these out for yourself. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one driver in here and we're gonna go ahead and choose, instead of a closed design, we're gonna choose the passive radiator design. It has it already built in. Now there is a problem with this program. It doesn't really know how to do passive radiators. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do here in a second. But first we need to go ahead and put the passive radiator parameters in here. Now the easiest way to do that is to just take a look at that Parts Express site that we are already on and we're gonna go ahead and copy these parameters. Now sometimes you'll see these, instead of saying VAS, you'll see like VPR and that stands uh, for the passive radiator or maybe you'll see QPR or FPR. Uh, that's the same thing as VAS or QMS or FS. So keep that in mind. VAS we're gonna be doing a 2.79, QMS 4.79, and the FS is going to be 21 Hertz, and the SD is 506.7. Xmax, 26 millimeters. Now let's go ahead and hit next. And you see there is no alignment, like I said, WinISD just doesn't know what to do with this information, so we're gonna have to tell it what to do. So let's go in here, click just passive radiator, 
And before we do anything, the first thing we want to do is take a look at the box size. Now the box size is 1.766 cubic feet. WinISD doesn't have any idea what box size to put in there. It just puts a random box size in there. So what we want to do is go back to Parts Express website and we're going to click on the driver that we chose and we're going to look at the vented enclosure size. Typically, that's going to be your best size enclosure to start with with a passive radiator. We can go up and down from there. But now we're going to go ahead and click 2.5 cubic feet and that did a much better job of evening this out. Now we could go bigger, we could go smaller from here. If we wanted to go real big, we could make it very, very linear, but we'll probably have some issues with cone excursion. So we'll just go ahead and do 2.5 for the time being, and we'll take a look at exactly what information you need to see in order to know if this is going to work for you. Now, what we first wanna do is get an idea of how much power we're going to be giving this. I'm gonna assume 400 watts because that's your RMS. However, this is capable of up to 700, so it's possible that maybe you want to do 700, but let's start with 400 watts. We're just going to go over to our signal tab and we're going to type in 400 watts. Now, once we do that, we can click on this graphs up here and scroll down to cone excursion PR. That stands for the cone excursion of the passive radiator. This is when we're going to find out if this passive radiator is going to work with inside this box. If we take a look at it, this red line, stands for your X max. It is not crossing the red line. So at 400 Watts, this passive radiator actually does work. But what if we wanted to increase the waters? Let's say we wanted to go up to 700 Watts. Well, now it no longer works. <laughs> so 700 Watts doesn't work. Let's scroll back down to 400 for a second. What if we wanted to change the tuning frequency? Now, the way you change the tuning frequency on a passive radiator is you add weight. The more weight that you add, the lower it will go in tuning. So in order to show you that, let's scroll back to the transfer function magnitude and let's go ahead and add some weight on the passive radiator. We'll just click on passive radiator and we'll go to added mass to cone. Now, although it does say added mass to cone, it doesn't necessarily mean the front of the cone. Although some passive radiators do allow you to add mass there, a lot of passive radiators now are actually on the back side of the driver. So we're gonna go ahead and add some mass here. Let's go ahead and add 150 grams. So at 150 grams, we do get a lower F3, we're at like 26 now hertz, but that's going to change our passive radiator and the cone excursion. So click back on the cone excursion of passive radiator and we see now that we've added the weight to the passive radiator, we are now exceeding X max with the same 400 watts. So if we wanted to have 150 grams, which I don't think is really necessary, if we click back here, we could probably scroll this down to closer to 80, and that gives us almost the same response. And if we click back on our cone excursion on the passive radiator, well, we still have an issue. And this is where we talk about double the volume displacement. In order to make this better, we're gonna have to either get a different passive radiator or add a second one. Now in WinISD, it's pretty simple to add a second passive radiator. You just hit the number two here, and we can see our, our passive radiator excursion is completely taken care of. And if we take a look at the transfer function magnitude, well, now we have issues. We're gonna to have to add some weight and uh, we'll probably add about 300 grams and that does do pretty good. We're back to about 26 Hertz. And when we take a look at the cone excursion for the passive radiator, it's completely taken care of. And this is where that double the volume displacement really comes into play. So if you didn't wanna buy a second passive radiator, which I can understand, those passive radiators are about $100 each for this particular subwoofer, then you're gonna to wanna to look for a different passive radiator. Now, I don't know if Parts Express sells one with better volume displacement, but what we can do here is just scroll down to another 12 inch and see if there is one. And right now we're not seeing any that would be better. So what we would probably do in this particular case is scroll up to the next size. And in this particular case, that would be a 15 inch. Now the 15 inch passive radiator is $140. That's cheaper than 200 for two. And if we click on the specifications, we can now go back to WinISD and change them right here from the passive radiator portion of WinISD. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well when you're modeling these 
Cone excursions is to keep in mind if you're going to have a high pass on it. Most people are going to be running a 20 hertz high pass on something like this design. So if you go over to your filters tab, we can go ahead and add one, add a high pass. We'll add one, a Butterworth at 20 hertz. And as you take a look at it, your cone excursion is now taken care of. So keep that in mind too. When you're modeling this, you're going to want to pay attention to whether you're going to have a high pass or not. Now, some people are going to say, what if I have a passive radiator and I don't have any of these TS parameters for the passive radiator? Good question. All you really need is SD, which you can measure the cone area for. And then the only other thing that you need is your X max, which you can actually figure out with just a tape measure, or at least get a good range with just using a tape measure. By doing that, you can get a decent idea of whether it's going to work with your project or not. As far as tuning that passive radiator, take a look at this video up here. I'm going to go ahead and leave a how to tune your passive radiator and I think you'll like it. All right guys, it's Toyd's DIY Audio. I hope you learned something. If so please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video. Otherwise, I'm out.